The last two weeks have been quite explosive or entertaining in terms of news online with changing social media names and whatnot. But in fact, quite literally, it was explosive even offline. It feels like the world had also been exploding, rather erupting into fires. In just 15 days in the last two weeks, at least 10 countries have been battling wildfires larger than they've ever seen. Multiple cities around the world have set consistent and daily increasing temperature records. People are having to be hospitalized in some places because they got burned when they fell down on the road. For the first time, the Antarctic ice has not recovered in winter like it does every year. Ocean temperatures are as warm as bathtubs and now there is fear that a crucial Atlantic Ocean current will collapse in just two years. All of this is not even touching upon the number of countries experiencing torrential rainfall, tornadoes and cyclones and floods, including India where multiple states in both the north and the south are seeing overflowing rivers and dams, collapsing bridges, terrifying landslides and deaths. On top of all of this, we're also already seeing staple crop failures. Everything that I just mentioned was only in the last 15 days. Of everything that happened though, some things are of significant importance. The Antarctic ice level, the Atlantic current collapse and crop failure. And from what we've seen in the past few days, the situation is much worse than what the most paranoid of climate scientists thought it was. And as with nearly every climate event we're experiencing these days, the reality is much worse than what was expected. Let's have a look at the world right now. Loss of glacial ice is occurring in large quantities in Antarctica and also in Greenland. When it is warmer, there is more evaporation and therefore there's more precipitation. So rain occurs in intense bursts leading to frequent floods. Currently, there are floods in China, South Korea, India and nearly all of Asia and Southeast Asia. There are raging wildfires in Italy, Sicily, Greece, Croatia, France, Spain, Portugal, Algeria, Syria and nearly all of Southern and Mid-Europe and Central Asia as well as North Africa and the Mediterranean countries. All of these countries are currently at this moment battling large wildfires. Many places are facing record temperatures, US all over and Canada, Albania and other places. Oceans of course are already too warm this year, way warmer than expected. Average sea surface temperature is at an all-time high at multiple places. The Mediterranean Sea, the east coast of North America, with scientists describing waters off the coast of Florida as hot tub levels going above 37.8 degrees Celsius. The ocean water. North Atlantic is just off the charts. There were multiple records that were broken in June and July. The hottest day on record for the world, extreme marine heat waves, highest sea surface ocean temperatures, highest number of continuous days of increasing temperatures, multiple cities seeing temperatures rise above 50 degrees Celsius, record low Antarctic ice, the most intense heat wave over an entire continent, roads scorching and burning people and God knows what else. Here are some of the more important things that we need to pay attention to for the future. First, let's look at Antarctica. What is happening at the South Pole is highly irregular. Basically, every year the ice melts in the summer months and most of it recovers in winter. Certain parts see increased melting and other parts of the continent see more ice forming. But this is the first time that the Antarctic ice has not been able to recover in the winter at all. Oceanographers and glaciologists are calling this a five sigma event. That is, it is five times outside of deviations, making it an extremely rare event. The ice is 1.6 million square kilometers 
lower than the previous low record which was of course last year and this is winter in the south pole this is quite problematic because already at the poles heating is faster antarctic peninsula warms five times faster than the rest of the planet and the southern ocean around antarctica is also getting warmer along with the atmosphere this could have effects like less phytoplankton blooms which are usually protected by a layer of ice on the sea and this change can then cascade up the food chain loss of sea ice also leads to a loss in white surface and the darker ocean absorbs more heat so the whole area's temperature will rise over the next few months as well as antarctica heads into summer and then it just goes out of control raising water levels and all of this water is fresh water not salt water so the mixing of melting ice mixing of fresh water into the sea will dilute the oceans making them less salty and disrupting ocean currents talking about oceans we come to the atlantic ocean a study that came out a couple of days ago found that a major atlantic ocean current could collapse by the year 2050 this will lead to extreme cold in many parts of the world and sea level rise on some coasts the scientists say the current is called the atlantic meridional overturning circulation or the amoc and it is responsible for transporting warm waters from one part of the ocean to another if this ocean current shuts down because of oceanic warming there can be serious consequences for the earth's climate systems and weather patterns at a global level weather patterns at global levels influence crops and agriculture and we know that irregular weather is going to be a problem for crops but it is already here and now for grains staples India now has banned the export of rice and now rice crops have failed in many countries farmers and importer exporters say that rice wheat tomatoes olives and other fruits and vegetables have been affected and they're not sure what the next few months hold for grain supply chains around the world even hardy native cacti that grow in deserts are having it tough the saguaro cactus which thrives in the deserts of america in arizona are dying due to excessive temperature and lack of monsoon it's not just that plants and vegetables are not growing because of erratic weather and warm soils transport is affected as well flights in multiple countries have been cancelled due to extreme weather and heat naturally it's also not just plants and crops other animals and creatures are also in trouble in the oceans the extreme heat waves are causing changes in marine life metabolism corals are of course getting bleached in just a few days in just two weeks multiple coral reefs around florida got completely bleached all of these events are not normal they are emergencies they are loud red alarm bell emergencies indeed data clearly shows that the rate at which parameters shift is exponential and results are always worse than predicted or expected even by the most paranoid of climate modelers we know that effects of climate change have been here for a few years now and we know that it will get more intense in the future but the future is now this is a new reality where we prepare long term for extreme weather on a daily basis see you in an even warmer world next week